Hello, everybody, and welcome to our preseason basketball special. I'm your host, Joe Zagacki. I'll be joined by Tamara Brown. Also coming up on our show, we'll have interviews with student athletes from both the men and the women. Also, we'll hear from University of Miami basketball coaches Katie Meyer and Jim Laraniga. And we'll take a look at some of the outstanding facilities here on campus at the University of Miami. It should be an exciting basketball season for both the men and the women. So let's get ready to tip things off. Welcome back to our preseason basketball special. Joe Zagacki with University of Miami women's head, back, head basketball coach Katie Meyer. Well, I think this is, if I've done my math correct, our 16th year doing shows together, but never like this. I know. 16 one takes. Always one take with you and I. <laughs> Different kind of show. At any rate, uh, it's basketball season, and I know it's been tough sledding to get to this point, but you got to be proud of your team. Well, I'm proud of this whole university community and our athletic department and our leadership um, and my players and their families, you know, even going down to our players' families that had to support the decision. Um, so a lot of work, a lot of effort, and now the fun stuff starts. What has practice been like for you this year? You know, it's been, um, <laughs> at first, the, you were more worried about their just their well-being. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't this uh, intense punishment-oriented practices by any stretch of the imagination. It was joyful. It was fun. It was like recess. I mean, we finally got to go to recess. You know, we've been cooped up inside, and we had time to just have two hours together where we could just run around on a basketball court. So uh, we really used that just for the wellness of our, of our, of our athletes. Um, and then we ramped up the intensity. Well, I think you've seen around the country, the world in terms of athletics is that a lot of games have been played in front of empty arenas or stadiums, but you've seen great effort mm -hmm. and you've seen, I think, a grateful approach from athletes. Have you sensed that with your team? It's crazy. If you're a big time division one athlete and you play the sport of basketball, all right, male or female, uh, it is the longest season, right? It is the most grueling in mm -hmm. terms of your time. You, you compete during finals, you compete uh, both semesters, you travel both semesters, and then, you know, lately they've been letting them stay the whole summer, so really they don't get a break. For, for our athletes to have a, a, a break, um, it wasn't all negative. I mean, it was a real awakening in terms of uh, having, you know, missing the sport, um, not having to report, not having all these obligations. You know, if you're, if you're in a stru highly structured program, you're able to just kind of show up and, and, and then to have to kind of figure it out on your own um, when the structure was gone and the coaches were gone and the trainers were gone and the strength coach was gone and you had to just figure out how much you really love it. Um, it, was a, it was a good awakening for a lot of our players. You play a, a very distinct style and uh, one that's hard to play against, right. which I think is always good. What are some of the things that you've liked about from what you've seen from your team so far? Well, we really... Um, you know, just because we've had some unusual events happening, you know, whether there's a contact tracing or whether there's an injury or, or, or our numbers and, and it, you know, getting our international players back was a big deal, right? So yeah. you, you kind of have to have a style just based on these times that uh, you are positionless, you know, because of number one, that's how I like to play, but also number two, out of necessity. So you can't have that one point guard and that one center and have everything run through two players and, and then you don't know if they're going to be available. So the positionless style, um, the pace, the fun, the freedom, the less structure is actually more important right now. And, and we've been playing that for a while anyway. We've all had a lot of time to reflect this year. Yes. <laughs> I wonder if you've had any time to think about where you've taken this program and maybe given yourself a little tiny pat on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Because I know what it was like when you took over mm -hmm. to where it is today where you've become an NCAA tournament contender, tournament team, ACC contender every single year, where right. now the opponent says, oh, gee, we got Miami on the schedule. Right. 
You know, the first team meeting, um, there were 35 names of young ladies that had come before the group I was standing in front of that had all been a part of this 10-year postseason streak. I mean, it, it is rare to go 10 straight postseasons. That is very rare. And I read off all the names very quietly, very solemnly, and just let the seniors know, you know, this is on you now. Like, your names need to be added to this list at the end of this season and keep this streak going because there is – quite a legacy here and and we have a lot of pride and and there are times that I can point up to the rafters and uh, see you know Octavia Blue up there or Shanice Johnson and Morgan Stroman and you know they're around our program now and uh, it makes a big difference. You talk about this year being difficult and it's going to be more conference games less non-conference games yeah. less time to find out about your team more conference games and the conference season is a grind. Well yeah and there that was the, the smartest decision, you know, and, and luckily I was on the committee that kind of was looking at it, like what's the smartest thing to do for scheduling-wise, and, you know, keeping it in the family, making sure that we're following all the protocols, making sure that we know what the travel will be like. We know we can get help at, a, at an away game, you know, if something happens at Louisville, they're going to help, they're, we're going to be family, even though we, we're going to be major competitors. So I think it was the smartest thing to do. Um, and, you know, in, in my opinion, um, the, the, the conference is where the meet is anyway, so you might as well just get to it, make sure you get those games in. Um, you know, we, you'd hate to play 10 non-conference games that don't have as much meaning and then have to maybe shut down, you know, so we're just like, hey, let's get right at it. Let's get after it. Let's play conference you know, only pretty much, uh, get a couple non-conference games in and, and figure out where we stand. We talked earlier a couple of weeks ago, and I had mentioned to you we had a great run in this town from the NBA team, the Miami mm -hmm. Heat, and uh, I asked, did you follow it? You said you studied it and coached Spolster very closely. Oh, very much so. And, and actually, yeah, Dan Craig, who's the assistant, um, and he's, he's, he's left now, but, you know, he, he's somebody that I would go to lunch with, and we are taking salt and pepper shakers and, and, and moving plays and drawing plays up and pretty much once a year in the off season, We would just X and O together because um, their style was so similar, how creative they are with some of their length, um, their multi-positional players. They don't, you know, the true point guard sort of when they lost Goran and what they were doing with Jimmy. And um, it was just amazing. So uh, followed that very closely. And then really the WNBA, I thought the WNBA was inspirational this summer. What an incredible league. Some of the players on your roster, you have, uh, you're returning a good amount of players, brought in some young players as well. Maybe give us an overview of your roster and some of the things that you're expecting out of your players. Well, it's funny. Sometimes you have like a, a slingshot effect uh, in recruiting. So um, we, we went, so we had all these great guards, attacking guards, starting with Shanice Johnson, Raquana Williams, Motley, T Jessica Thomas, Stephanie Edersom, and uh, now you've got Mikea and Taylor and India. And, and, um, and then you're like, but we need some length, right? Mm -hmm. So we have length now. Um, and then our, our big bigs um, did a great job for us. Uh, so we added some kind of Greyhound runners. But what our strength of this year's team is really going to be, besides our veteran play from the guard position, is a lot of six foot to six three um, length. We don't have the six seven. We don't have a, a Beatrice. But um, we definitely have a lineup that you know could pretty much be one guard and then everybody else is over six foot. Um, so it's not as speedy and as attacking as normal, but our vision's a lot better, our passing's a lot better. And you know, we, were, we weren't able to skip pass a lot um, when we were a little bit small in the guard position and I really needed that. So we are able to now actually make longer, harder um, passes above the defense, which is helping us a lot. It's funny you mentioned passing. Yeah. Because I was just gonna bring it up. Is you have been traditionally really a good passing team yeah yeah and then we did a little too much off the dribble um you know and, and that was by nature of Beatrice being injured last year uh, you kind of have to check down to see okay well who's going to score and how did they score and you take your scores and you figure out how they score and you know we had a lot of people that scored off the bounce um I think we're going to a little bit less dribbling but a lot more over the top play and you're not afraid to play to use your entire roster, oh. right? And and that's a benefit in listen, many ways, isn't it? Listen, if if you're going to play with energy and pride, and you can help this team, you're going to see the court, you know. And you can make mistakes in my system, and everybody knows that. Um, the mistake that you can't make is that you're hesitant and are afraid to play. You know, have some guts, get out there, dive on the floor, represent this university, play with pace, you know, and and share the joy. I mean, I, I think that's something that really it gets lost sometimes, but just like. How much do you love it? Like, how amazing. Like, even today in practice, just we had a tough scrimmage yesterday against the practice squad, 
and um, came back today and I was like, basketball is awesome. Like you've got to feel that. You've got to have it. you got to let it just go through your blood. you got to feel the disappointments when you don't play hard. Um, and you got to get deep down to something that you want to get to. Like who am I really? What really defines me? Uh, and uh, get there. You know, don't be afraid to go there because people are a little afraid to be vulnerable right now. But hey, not between the lines. Just put it all out there and let's see what happens. Well, the great news is we have college basketball, <laughs> and you're going to coach the heck out of your team. I know that. Yes. The bad news is you'll have to put uh, fishing on pause for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I haven't been doing much of that, but uh, I'll tell you what. The, the pause in terms of uh, I, I get a chance to really spend some time and kind of create a new offense uh, with a, a hybrid of some stuff I was seeing all summer with the WNBA and the NBA and pulling plays from the Milwaukee Bucks and the Clippers and then some of the WNBA teams and people that have beaten us in the past here and really tinkered a lot and um, it doesn't look great yet but uh, it was really fun to find the time to put it in um, don't usually have that much time so uh, I think uh, when it does when we do get clicking with it uh, I think it's going to be even a new uh, a more exciting style than we've played with before all right very good great to see you thank you for being yeah. with us Take care. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Katie Meyer. Stay with us as we continue with our basketball preview show right after this. What's up, Canes fans? I'm Tamara Brown. You're about to play trivia presented by Vizzy. We're so glad to have you back if you've played with us during football season. But if you're new here, we're so glad you're here too. Just a reminder, you must be 21 and up to play and don't forget to celebrate responsibly. Our first question is a Miami Hurricanes men's basketball question. In 2013, the Hurricanes had their third largest victory over an AP number one team when they defeated Duke at the Watsko Center. How many points did the Hurricanes win by? Think about it, phone a friend if you need to. We'll be right back with the answer after this. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team, I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually wherever you are, we're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. All right, Canes fans, we're back and time is up. Let's see how well you know the Miami Hurricanes. In 2013, the Miami Hurricanes beat the Duke Blue Devils, the number one team in the country, by 27 points. That's right, 27 points. If you got that right, good job. We'll have more trivia questions later, but for now, let's get back to the show. One of the top second-year players for the University of Miami women's basketball team is Milena Johnson City Baba, who right now is with our Tamara Brown. Thanks, Joe. We're joined by Milena Johnson City Baba. Milena, thank you so much for joining us today. This season, preparing for it was a little different with COVID-19. Can you talk about what preparing for this upcoming season was like for you? Well, I think everyone on the team was like really excited for the season to start, but everyone had a question if the season would start and when it would start. Uh, also, like uh, wearing masks and stuff like that during uh, workouts has been different than this whole like social distancing thing. But I feel like Miami and the whole school has done a, like a really great job just making it easier for us athletes to uh, just improve in our game during this like pandemic. And for you, what was your goal for yourself coming into your sophomore season? You were one of two freshmen that were averaging 15 minutes a game last year. Um, just improving. Uh, well, coming into the season, uh, I just wanted to improve as a player, both on and off court. And I've talked a lot to coach and just being more aggressive and just making the team better in any any type of way I could. In what areas would you say that you wanted to see more growth for yourself? Um, like all around, just being able to score and just be just be able to uh, make the team better uh, scoring wise. If it's just passing, just being aggressive in defense or offense, just doing whatever it takes for us to win. How have you been able to learn from your veteran group of girls? I mean, you have four of your five starters coming back. What have they been able to bring to the table that you've really been able to learn from? Uh, 
they've been uh, talking to me a lot and just being a great leader and just having uh, the guards as leaders because they're in the same position. It's just been really awesome and having Kelsey uh, talking to me like extra, uh, like both on and off court has been really good for me, I think. And you mentioned how the veteran group has been, you know, really influ influential to you. How yeah. has Coach Meyer been to you since your time, since you joined this this Miami Hurricanes team? Uh, she's been awesome. Um, uh, she's been hard on me and tough on me, but uh, I feel like she believes in me, and it's been important to have her like by my side. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't ask for anyone else than Coach. And you are one of five international girls on this 14-person roster. You know, what is it like to have a group of five girls that are all from overseas playing on this Miami Hurricanes team? Um, I would say that I'm blessed to have uh, foreigners with me, um, especially when I've played against one of them. Uh, I feel like we have the same mentality and the same vision uh, for the game, so it's just been a, more of a comfort zone having... Uh, all the f foreigners uh, here just supporting and just being there for us. And I feel like we're like a small group and yeah. What is it about your game overseas that, that is really helpful um, when it comes to playing in the ACC? I think the IQ, just uh, being basketball smart and knowing the plays and it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one and a lot of fast pace here in America, but the vision and stuff like that, I feel like I've taken from back home. And when the schedule finally came out last week, you know, what was that feeling like knowing that, wow, it's finally here? Yeah, uh, we were uh, super excited, the whole team, just knowing that it would be a season and we would be able to play. So we're truly blessed and we're just going out at every practice, just working hard to just be ready to play and have fun on the court. You Hopefully guys seem to have a lot of fun on the court this year. I've seen a lot of great TikTok videos. Can you talk about <laughs> the chemistry that this team has? Yeah, the TikTok Tuesday. Um, uh, the chemistry is awesome. Um, I mean, I think it's super important uh, that we're just having fun both like on and off the court. Um, also, Naomi coming in with a lot of energy. Just We're just having fun. and. Yeah. You mentioned Naomi and you know her coming into the into this group as, you know, a transfer. What yeah. is she able, able to bring to this team with her experience? Um, she's a she's a tall player, a uh, tall all-around player that can shoot and uh, uh, having Naomi in the roster is uh, awesome. She's a tall, athletic, just all-around player and having her playing a lot of multiple positions has been important for us as a team and it's just made our uh, team taller and something that uh, could uh, benefit us during games. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melina, for your time and Thank good you. luck this season. Thank you. Anyone who's setting this blur screen right here is going to be a player on our team. So this player right here, right now if you're open, you stay. Then Des would rise. Got it? That's all we got. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, top! We gotta be Miami today. All right, let's go. Here we go, Bree. Hand up, Kelsey. Touch your hand, touch your hand, let's go. Lots of energy. Follow faces, follow faces. Reverse it. There we go. Nice, we're live, let's get them going, let's go. Come on, Des, come on, turn over. That's it, MJ. Great setup. That's what I'm talking about. Nice, clean basketball. Let's go, Miami. Come on. There you go. That's it. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Nice, Kelsey. Hey, all skills are always live in our program. Just go live for them. For Today, we got to get our pace up, and we got to lock in. Like, after this week, I'm pretty locked in on what, what we're doing, what works, what our lineups are, what shots we're getting. So she's going to start on one side. They're going to look at each other, and they're going to go together. You guys are too talented to be robots. You're too talented. Good, good. Come on, come on, come on. Second slot. How about to be tough the whole time and disciplined? Come on. Give me a back. Give me a back. So it's follow back. Hey, you're going to really want to know my voice in about a week when it's a close game. All of a sudden, you're going to be eyes on me. You better learn how to listen to me. Yeah! Let's go. Ball up, ball up, ball up. Stop the clock. It's 62-70. So we're down? Eight. 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 With one? One. 
12. Uh, 119, okay? Guys, you need to start chattering. 119 to go, we're still winning. We got this, we got this, we got this. Hey, Des, what do you got, Des, what do you got? Nice, go, MJ! Yeah, Taylor, yeah, Taylor! We're down five, we need to play here, we need to play. Hey, I know you want it though, Nyanga, I take that shot. I want you to understand with the advanced timeout situation, you guys are down eight with two minutes to go and you think the game's over. It's not even close to over, it's not even halfway over, it's not, it is a winnable ball game. As long as you've been smart the whole game and I haven't burned all my time out. I, I'm more concerned about how we're walking around like we're gonna be casual. Get low, get low, let's go. This is big time. This is when your teammates, your coaches, everybody understands if you can be in at the end of the game, all right? When we're rolling our specialty sets, when the possessions are important, when we need you, we need to rely on you. So if you don't understand something in this segment, do not nod your head. It will do you only harm. Ball up, ball up, down seven, come on. No ball screens early and then get them late after we move them around. And she has great ideas, she really does. But you gotta call it, just be like, hey, I got you, Taylor, hey, we got a kickback pitch. No, 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 I got you, I got you, go ahead, go ahead. Like, do you, you, you wanna run it because you had a good idea? You go so fast, like a kid opening a present on Christmas. So we, we open up this, so you can always have a hot call too. It comes in, you can just give and go. So there's no one who can't hit a three on our team right now in a big moment. So find your threes, we need a three. Someone's open, someone's open. Yeah, it does. Yeah, baby! Hey, hey, that's a huge response by that kid. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, that's awesome. That's it. Nice. Great job. Great job. All right, let's have some water. Good job, ladies. Good. Good. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Well done. When it comes time to play and you're not going, what's that play? At this point, you know. It's not what's that play anymore, okay? It's gotta be, what do we want from that play, okay? The whys and the whos are important. The what should be easy, okay? Why and who is where we're going. Thank you for free getting MIP peace! Thank God! Thank God! I handle the table. There we go, there we go, there we go! I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing the ass in that above my head. <laughs> In our first question, we tested your men's basketball knowledge, but now this is all about women's hoops. In 2019, the Miami women's basketball team had their first ever win over a top three opponent. They defeated the nation's number two team in the country on the road. What team did the Canes beat? Think about it, take some time to get the answer, and we'll be right back after this. We understand your passion to play, your love of the game. We live and breathe it too. At our core is a deep, relentless pursuit to heal the body and alleviate pain, to rehabilitate spirits and restore quality of life, to elevate your performance. Because we not only innovate medicine, we preserve dreams and inspire futures. We are the University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. So no matter what takes you out of the game, we'll help get you back in. We'll help you recover your game. We're back and hopefully you have the answer to question number two by now. The answer is Louisville. In 2019, the Miami Hurricanes women's basketball team went to number two Louisville and defeated the Cards in their own house. That's a huge win for this Canes program. It was a sight to see. Hopefully you didn't miss that one. If you got that answer right, give yourself a pat on the back. We'll be back with more trivia after this, but for now, let's get back to the show. Tamara Brown is now with another key player of the Hurricanes women's basketball team backcourt, India Banks. Joe, thank you. We've got senior guard India Banks joining us today. India, preparing, this, preparing for this season has been unlike any other with dealing with unprecedented times. What was the preparation like for you coming into this season? Um, my preparation was more so like trying to stay in shape and not get like fully out of shape because of just being at home for those certain amount of months. Just getting in shape and being ready for what's coming up next. 
Did you pick up any new skills or hobbies while you were at home and trying to make the most of the situation? Uh, a new skill I picked up? Uh, nah, I just got read more. Like I had read books and, you know, hang out with my family and my sisters. And, you know, from last year to the year before, you doubled your scoring in points. This year, what would you say your goals are for yourself as, as you've doubled your points, you know, from your sophomore or junior season? What is from, what is your goal from your junior to your senior season? Um, I feel like my senior season, I should be kind of consistent with it. I say just consistent, like staying reliable and my team can be able to count on me to get a shot or get a bucket. In this group, you've had, you there's a group of four who were freshmen together and now they're coming into their season senior season together what is that like to be able to hold that bond together for four years and now finish it out strong together this season um it's it's a great feeling because they're like my sisters now like i watch out for them they watch out for me and we like look for each other on the court just like just to have each other back and it's like it's real um comforting on the court i could say just to know like somebody that knows you and knows how you play and what you're thinking about type stuff. So it's good to have those three other people to play with me. And, you know, when you when you look at your group, what would you say, you know, this group has been able to bring to the table, especially to the younger and the newcomer newcomers on this team as you guys are preparing for a season in a different way? Um, I feel like that we us four, we, we, we bring we bring fight and like grit, like we're going to get in people and we're going to be hard in practice. We're going to talk loud. We're going we're gonna to do the whole nine like to do what we have to do to win. What would you say that, you know, Coach Myers' message has been to this team? You said you guys have bring the, bring the grit and you guys work hard at practice. What has Coach Meyer been saying to you guys at practice? Um, she's been saying um, that, like, she hasn't really been saying anything, but, like, she says that, like, we – we like she's been coaching us for four years so far so like we really don't have too much to like talk about like we know what each other wants and how everything is going to be and what we all like want as an outcome and which is like win the ACC championship type of status. And when that schedule finally came out last week when it finally came out what was that feeling in your stomach to know that okay it's finally here? Uh, it was relief, like out of all the stuff we'd have been through with the COVID and the Black Lives Matter and everything we'd have been through, that like kind of like we could finally just get back to get back to normal, like just just basketball. That's what I know, so it's great to have it back. You've got basketball back, but your Canes fans won't be in the Watsco Center at least for the first two months of the season. But do you have a message that you want to share to those Canes fans that are going to be cheering from you from home this season? Um, I know that they're gonna be right there with us, watching us on TV and tweeting about us. And I know they want to be there. Definitely like our um, our boosters and everyone. I know they want to be there, and they're gonna be there in spirit with us. I feel. Awesome. Thank you, India. You up. Download the new Miami Hurricanes app today for the ultimate Canes fan experience. Welcome back to our preseason basketball special here at the University of Miami. Basketball has really taken off the last several years under head coach Jim Laranega and Katie Meyer. Now let's take a look at the facilities for both the men and the women. They are top shelf.
time for more trivia. We're halfway through our questions for today. This one is men's basketball. Again, we're going back to men's basketball. Coach Laranega has been here for nine seasons. How many 20 win seasons has he had in those nine seasons? We'll be back with the answer after this. As one of the more than 1,200 physicians on the University of Miami Health System team, I want to welcome you. Our facilities are open. And we're ready to care for you. Our commitment to your health is unwavering. And we have implemented many new guidelines to keep us safe. We are ready to care for you. In our facilities or virtually, wherever you are, we're ready. And we look forward to caring for you. See a specialist today in person or virtually. Canes fans, the answer is six. In the last nine years, Coach Laranega has had six 20-win seasons in that time frame. If you didn't get it right, it's okay. We have one more trivia question left. But for now, let's get back to the show. All the way to the basket. Welcome back to our basketball preview show. We now move our attention to University of Miami men's basketball. And joining us is University of Miami head basketball coach Jim Laranega. Coach, y'all, always good to see you as we get ready to tip off the basketball season. I know it's been tough sledding here in 2020, but I know you're also excited about this year's team. Yeah, Joe, this is a little different kind of interview. Uh, this is kind of long distance. I'm at the Watsco Center. Where are you? I'm in the baseball stadium, so it's good to see you. <laughs> So yeah, I am excited about this season. We, we've already had some bumps and bruises that I'm really concerned about, but the guys have been working hard. We've been in the gym since July the 20th. Uh, we've had official practices since mid-September and uh, we haven't had anybody test positive for COVID. So that's a real plus. But unfortunately, Sam Wardenberg uh, pulled a ligament uh, in his foot and had to have surgery. He's out for the season. We've had several other guys who have, been, have missed practices due to, to some injuries. We're hoping to have those guys back and hopefully before our opener. A lot of people throw around the word culture. You certainly have built one at the University of Miami in your time here with the Hurricanes program. How much do you think that will help your team and your program through this situation here in 2020 and 2021? Well, we talk about attitude, commitment, and class all the time. And attitude is basically have a positive attitude towards everything you do. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. So COVID is the 10%. The 90% is how we react to it, which means we, we're, my guys, all the guys, we're, we're doing a good job. My staff, we get in the gym, we put our, our masks on, we, we have good practices, the guys work hard. We've just been very short-handed again. We only have 12 scholarship guys, and uh, we, we've had at least two or three injured for every practice. So it, it's been hard to, to really uh, get our, our feet planted on the ground and do all the things that we want to do during the course of a game, especially at the defensive end of the floor. We, we're, we continue to struggle. The last two seasons, we've not been very good defensively. And even in this preseason, with all the time we're spending, we must improve defensively, and we're certainly not there yet. I want to get to your roster in a moment, but you just mentioned attitude. And certainly through the last, I don't know, what it could be five or eight years here at the University of Miami, you've had some interesting uh, road bumps to get around, whether it's been a 10-point deficit on the road in a critical game and your team has overcome that, or some uh, travel situations where we were snowed in and you play turned a, a, a meeting room into a baseball field for the, for the players. And going back to attitude, I think that during this time, 
where we've had to adjust to a lot of different things. If anybody is prepared to adjust, it's people in sports, especially you. Well, of course, you know, every, every day is a new day and you're always dealing with new circumstances. Um, you prepare for every game almost identical, where my coaching staff is broken up into the responsibilities like a football staff. Uh, Chris Caputo is my defensive coordinator. Adam Fisher is our offensive coordinator. And Bill Courtney is the scout team coordinator. So those are experienced guys. We've worked many years together. We're almost always on the same page. And our job is to try to get our players on the same page with us so they understand what the game plan is and how to execute the game plan. And that's whether we're at home or on the road. And this year, we're going to have a whole lot more protocols in place. So, for example, a lot of times in years past, uh, our players' roommates would be different guys all the time so that they could get to know each other. This year, you're going to have to room with the guy you roomed with on campus because of COVID. We don't want guys being together that aren't normally together at night. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, with uh, some safety uh, measures in place and, and with good social distancing, our guys can stay healthy and we can be as close to full strength as possible during the season. Okay, on the floor, Chris Lights comes back. First team all ACC player. Remarkable, uh, remarkable respect to Chris Lights. We see respect on the floor, the way teams defend him. What kind of impact can Chris have for you this year? Well, Chris is, is on his way to becoming one of the leading scorers in the University of Miami basketball history. He's had a tremendous career. He moved into the starting lineup uh, uh, midway through his freshman year. He averaged double figure points. Sophomore year, uh, he had a great year. Junior year, our leading scorer, all-conference player, now a preseason all-conference player. He's playing his best basketball right now in practice at the offensive end. But what we've asked him to do is really pick up his intensity at the defensive end. He's got to become not only a better on-ball defender, but he's got to be a much, much better off-the-ball defender, being a team-oriented defender, because defense has two categories, individual defense and team defense. His individual defense is improving dramatically. We need his team defense to do the same. You have some older players. Cam Augusti's been in your system for a couple of years. Rodney Miller as well. Nizier Brooks was with you last year. So you have some older players that should help. Yeah, we've got, got an older guy. We actually have, if, if you look at, at the numbers, we could have six seniors. You know, Sam Wardenberg is hurt, so he won't play this year. Nasir Brooks is a, a fifth-year senior and a transfer from Cincinnati. He looks terrific. He's, he's going to be a very good defender and rebounder for us. If we can keep him out of foul trouble, he's such an aggressive guy, a little bit like a Buka Azundu, who our fans will remember, Got himself in a lot of foul trouble during the season. We've got to prevent that because he's so impactful. Uh, and then Rodney Miller is another fifth-year senior. He redshirted his junior year, got himself in much better shape. He's progressing very, very well. He and Nasir should share that that uh, center position. Then Ed Dengak, who's he's only played really in 15 games, but he's a senior in college. This is his fourth year. Uh, we had a red shirt him uh, his freshman year. Then he got injured his sophomore year, re-injured his other knee uh, his junior year, and he's coming back. If, if Dang can stay healthy, he can be very uh, impactful as well because he's 6'11", 210 pounds, can block some shots, get some rebounds. He's shooting the ball better than ever. So those are three guys, 6'11", 6'11", 7 foot. So hopefully all three can stay healthy and, and help us this year. Chris Likes is a fourth-year senior. Cam Mcgusty is a fifth-year senior. So those, those guys, we're counting on to score a lot of points, but we're also counting on them to play a lot of good defense. Isaiah Wong was terrific, uh, terrific for you at the end of last year. Harlan Beverly got a lot of playing time. Anthony Walker, then you added two freshmen as well. 
uh, in Cross and Timberlake. So you also have some young players coming along that can push the older guys, but some young players that had some valuable playing time and are very talented. Yeah, if you look at our young roster, uh, you're, you're looking at Earl Timberlake, who is an outstanding recruit, very highly regarded, and then Matt Cross, a top 100 player, Matt has been healthy throughout. He's really improved himself at both ends of the floor. He's going to earn a lot of playing time this season, partially because he's earned it and partially because Sam Wardenberg won't be available. Earl Timberlake, on the other hand, was practicing very well, but he's now had some nagging injuries that's kept him out of practice, which then disturbs your routine. And Earl's going to have to kind of get himself back healthy first and then back in shape, and then back uh, within the chemistry of the team, both on offense and defense. The sophomores, I, I, I love them athletically. Harlan Beverly is a terrific 6'5 athlete, can play the one and the two. Uh, he's uh, developed some better defensive habits. I like the direction he's going in there. Uh, you you uh, have Isaiah Wong next to him who had a tremendous February and March. Isaiah is a high-octane scorer, a very good athlete. His three-point shot is, is much improved. And then Anthony Walker may be our most improved player from July to mid-September. But in mid-September, he sprained his knee, and he hasn't practiced in, in the last four weeks. Once October came, uh, he... he he, he, he did it just changing directions. He just, I don't know if he stepped on a wet spot or, or I think he just uh, kind of did like a 360 trying to do some fancy dunk or something. And, and Anthony is one of those, you know, lovable guys. And it's hard to get mad at him, but he has improved. And between Matt Cross and Anthony Walker, we're really counting on those two young guys, a freshman and a sophomore to step up and fill the big shoes left open by, by Sam Wardenberg. Well, ACC basketball is always a spectacular adventure ride with lots of drama. We look forward to that. Coach, you look great. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you, Joe. Always my pleasure. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Jim Laranega. One of the fabulous stars inside the ACC is Hurricanes point guard Chris Lakes. He's been electrifying for the first three years of his career here at the University of Miami. Miami's leading scorer a year ago, their fearless passer and tremendous leader. Chris Lakes is now talking with our Tamara Brown. Thanks, Joe. We've got senior guard Chris Likes here joining us today. Chris, you're a senior year this year for the Miami Hurricanes team, but this season, preparing for it was unlike any other. What was it like preparing for this season in unprecedented times? Um, really, we were just grateful for um, all the time that we, we were able to get in the gym and, and actually be able to you know play the game of basketball. So, um, like you said, with all that's been going around and um, the difficult times that we're kind of experiencing this year in 2020, um, yeah, guys have just really been grateful to be uh, in the gym and be able to be with the, the team. In addition to battling COVID-19 and, and the difficulties that w came that came with preparing for the season, you're also coming back from injury and a, and a surgery and a rehab. What has your rehab and, and coming back process been like? Um, it's been great. Uh, it's been everything I could ask for. Um, it's been a great rehab. Um, the guys here at, at, at UM do a really good job of um, kind of putting out the like the, the game plan for you in terms of your recovery and um, and how long you're going to be out. So um, I was in good hands and uh, God uh, helped me with my recovery uh, process. So um, I'm really uh, excited and, and thankful for how that went. What were your goals that you set for yourself coming into this season? Um, a lot of a lot of the goals really just had to do with uh, with winning. Um, I didn't really have or go into this season with personal accolades. Um, really, I just want to win as many games as possible, get into that tournament, and um, just, do, just do the best that we possibly can, you know, get this program back on its feet. And really, that's my, my main goal. And going into this season, you have two incoming freshmen, the newcomers of the team. What can you say about what they're able to bring to this Miami Hurricanes group? Um, they both bring in very unique aspects. Um, Earl is, is very, very versatile in terms of he can he can play anywhere um, on the floor. Um, defensively, he's two-way. He's a two-way player. 
Um, he's a playmaker, so I'm definitely excited, looking forward into uh, how, he, how he progresses throughout the year. Um, and Matt Cross, knockdown shooter, um, he's learning. He's learning very quickly, actually. Um, he plays hard, and he's always, um, you know, good energy. He's a good energy guy, and he's going to do what the team needs to. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to the two the two prospects that we, we brought in, and uh, hopefully they can help us turn this program around. So we've talked about the newcomers, but we also have one technically newcomer that will be on the floor this year. Mm -hmm. Nazir Brooks will finally be able to play for the Miami Hurricanes. What are you looking forward to with him being able to take the floor? Um, I'm looking for a whole, whole lot from, from him. Um, he's, he's a big time player. He's going to come in here and do uh, a lot of big things for us um, in terms of rim protection, um, getting out there, showing on the ball screens, being a presence, uh, being a vocal leader, um, something that he's very good at. And um, overall, just, just helping this, this program. I know I've said it um, a number of times so far, but um, helping get this program back on its feet is the a, is a number one priority. When you were out, Harlan Beverly and Isaiah Wong really stepped in and had big minutes the second half of the season. What have you seen from them over the offseason as we prepare for the first game? Um, they, they progress, and that's, that's all you can ask. Um, both of them have gotten better um, in respective um, areas of their game, and um, it's, it's cool to watch, you know, freshmen, you know, grow up and make those strides forward um, in terms of progression. So um, I'm definitely happy for them, definitely excited for uh, the things that's going to be coming for them in the next couple of years. Chris, you know, awaiting the season to finally begin, when that schedule finally went out on social media, went out, you know, in, in over media days and everything else, what was that feeling like for you to finally see, like, it's happening? Um, I was just excited, man. Like it's basketball. That's that's really uh, been my whole life, and that's why I'm here now. That's why I'm here today. Um, it's got me to this point. So if we can keep playing, and maybe not fans or whatever. Um, like I said earlier, I'm just really excited to be to be playing with my teammates one, one last year. So, what has been the message from Coach L to this team as you guys prepare for a tip off of the first game at home? Um, the message has been we just got to keep getting better. We got to keep improving um, day by day, take it a day at a time. Um, it's a lot of things that we got to learn. It's a lot of things um, we have to do in order to, to gel as a team. And um, I feel like we're doing that, and it's just going to be a day at a time. Uh, that's the main thing he's been stressing. You mentioned gelling as a team. Who would you say is the glue of this team that really keeps you guys together? Um, the glue of this team? I would probably, I know Sam got, got injured, but he's definitely, um, he's always been the glue guy, I feel like, in my opinion. Um, he's going to do exactly what the team needs. Um, so now I think all of us got to kind of be glue guys a little bit in the sense of um, we got to make up for a lot that we lost from, from, from Sam Wardenberg. So um, he's going to be there in spirit for us, and we know that. So, um, yeah. Who have you seen who are, who, including one or multiple players step up and, and take Sam's place on the court? Um, I've, there's been a lot of guys. Uh, Anthony Walker, um, Matt Cross, Earl, uh, Dan Gack, um, Monsieur Brooks, Rod. Um, Sam does a really good job at doing the things that don't get counted for in the, in the um, stat book. So um, we got to make up for it in rebounding and defense. And, a lot of the dirty work that he does. So it's going to be a collective group uh, group effort to make up for what Sam brought to the team. Thank you, Chris. Can't wait to see you out on the floor this year. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Three, two, one. To understand defense, you have to understand defensive concepts. It's very easy to just get glued on your man. I got my man, I got my man, I'm playing good defense. Ready? Low dribbles, right side, right side. Down here, guards, follow the leader, fix down here. That's it, Matt, that's the way it should look. I gotta chase it down, get it and just go. In one, maybe a second dribble, I'm scoring. Good, go. Oh, I, got I gotta teach you how to dunk. We got to create in our own minds that's who we're playing against. Because if you don't, you just go through the motions. That's no good either. It's got to be us working on us. So we're playing four on four, but there's a limit. You only have two dribbles. Every player has two. 
Now, if you throw it and you get it back, you get two more. But when you have it, best you can do is put the ball on the ground two times. White, come here. What I'm telling you is that's how you play basketball. I, I didn't know who, no one was like going, dribbling the ball at that, trying to beat their own man. You cut, you got a back door. Then the next guy cuts, he gets it. The cutting and the moving is what we're looking for. Go, go, run. You gotta get back. That's what I want. Some good movement without the ball. Catch it, Cam, help him, help him. You beat a guy on the cut. That's what it's about. Did you cut when Zay caught it? Don't play it. I wanted to see if they would throw him the lob. Hey, in the dunker spot. You're getting the ball right now. Take it out down there, Cam. But as soon as you score, sprint back and load to the ball and don't let these guys score. One, two, three. Yeah. Someone cut. You didn't have anybody like cut to the basket, try to beat your man without the ball. That's what we're working on defensively, too. Had a guard, a cutter, right? Take the screen away and you cut. But we've got to have more cutting. Throw it into that post and watch, and, and split. Cut. You want to be at the three-point line. Good. Do it again. Same thing. You must do both. You're never doing just one thing. All right? Never in basketball. You're always doing multiple things, especially at the defensive end of the floor where you have to guard the ball, you gotta help guard the ball, you gotta fight through screens, you gotta call out screens. You're always doing a lot of different things. That one was much better. Your play with, with uh, Dang, you know, come right off the handoff, one dribble, he rolls. That's game-like, right? The stuff you guys were doing early, dribble, handoff, kick it, someone cut, someone go back door. That's what we gotta get to when we're, when we're playing 41. Start right there, zigzag, down this way, back the other, let's go, right here. Set, Matt, good speed. Good, chase it down. Nice, Willie. Next group, let's go. Do not hit the pylon. You hit it, we gotta stop and go over. When you're playing against teams that have big guys and in the passing lane, it's not so easy and chest passes don't work. You gotta throw it over. That's why when we're warming up, I tell you, overhead. Matt, Flash, and I need those two guys to get involved. Anybody can put in time. The guys who focus and get results and get your confidence way up where you're feeling like, hey, every time I shoot it, it's going in. Hands in. One, two, three. Yeah. It's time for our final busy trivia question of the day. We're headed back to women's basketball for this one. How many consecutive postseason appearances have the Miami Hurricanes had? Here's a hint. This includes the NCAA and WNIT tournament. I can't give you the answer just yet. Stick around. We'll have the answer after the break. Download the new Miami Hurricanes app today for the ultimate Canes fan experience. Hopefully you've had some time by now to dig up the answer. The answer is 10 consecutive seasons. The Miami women's basketball program has had 10 consecutive postseason appearances. That's huge. Can't wait to see what coach Katie Meyer and the squad does this year. Thank you so much for playing trivia presented by Vizzy. Let's get back to the show. The Hurricanes will have a much older team this year, led by fifth-year senior Rodney Miller. The center was one of Miami's most improved players a year ago. He's speaking now with our Tamara Brown. Thanks, Joe. We've got redshirt senior center Rod Rodney Miller here with us today. Rodney, so glad to have you here with us. What was preparing for this season like? It's been an unprecedented time. You're a redshirt senior coming to this team with a lot of experience, but this is something that everyone was new dealing with this year. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, you know, with quarantine and, and COVID and everything, it's been a challenge, but everybody here at the U has been just so patient and uh, positive, and we've really stuck together, and we've been able to, you know, keep a positive environment, and 
just keep moving forward and working. You know, Coach L really had us emphasize on let's just get better every day while we're together when we can. We don't know if uh, things may change, but if they do, we'll adapt. But right now we have our mindset on winning and just getting better, and that's what we're going to do. You mentioned getting better every day was the mindset of Coach L for your team this season. What were you focusing on getting better at this year? Being a, a vocal leader on this team, you know, as you said, being a fifth year senior, I got to be the, the guy on the team. You got to be a, a voice and I got to be heard and uh, make my presence felt. And um, I feel like I've been training for that all my time here at the U. So it's really time to really put that in action. and and do whatever I can to help this team win. Um, you know, rebounding the defense has been a problem for us in the past, so stepping that up and just contributing to the team any way I can. And I feel like, you know, Coach Ellen, the coaching staff has put us in a position to be successful, and all we gotta do is buy in and um, just do what we have to do. You guys have a core group of leaders this year with a lot of veterans coming back, and you're adding Nasir Brooks into the picture. What are you excited about having him on the floor with you? Uh, just, you know, somebody out there to help us out for those things. The same reasons we have problems with, that guy is the guy to do it. And um, he's definitely made an impact since he's been here. And I'm um, super excited to have him out there. It sucked him uh, sitting out last year, but practices were was fun, you know, and now it's just time to put everything into action. Um, so with the, the senior lineup and this, the seniors we got here, everybody has to do their part and then be a vocal leader. And I feel like that's what's going to make us so effective this year. Uh, you know, having all these seniors and being able to teach uh, the younger guys, the freshmen coming in and all growing and learning together at such a fast rate, it's, it's going to be impressive what we, we can accomplish this season. You brought up the freshmen. You got two great guys coming in. What can you tell us about Earl Timberlake and Matt Cross? You know, Matt and Earl, you know, two, two sponges, I, I want to call them, because they came in and absorbed so much information in a short amount of time. You know, um, it's, it's notoriously known to pick on the freshmen, you know, in, in competition. So that's why they got to be as, as, as quick to the jump and learning curve as possible. And they, they've adapted so well and they've learned so much in these short couple weeks that we've been together. And we're expecting a lot out of them, you know, even though we, we have a lot of seniors and upperclassmen, everybody's going to have to do their part and perform. And Matt and Earl are two key, key role players on the team, and I feel like they're going to have a great impact this season. Rodney, what were you feeling when that schedule finally hit social media, when media days finally came around to know that the season is finally here? It, it's more of a feeling of relief, you know, uh, every day you don't know if the season is canceled or shut down. You know, we go day by day just like everybody else. Um, that's why it was key for us to really focus on, on getting better and being in the gym while we can and whatever time we're allotted, just, you know, make the best of it. So that feeling of relief, and now it's adrenaline to just get going and let's get this thing started. Uh, it's full of excitement and really want to win this year, and that, that's on everybody's mind is winning, winning, winning. So, yeah, I'm super excited to get going. Do you have a message to the fans who are going to be cheering you on from home this year? I uh, just want to let the Canes fans know that we've been working hard all through quarantine, all through COVID, and we just want you guys to know that we're going to do our best out there, and we're expecting a lot. And we appreciate and love you guys for all the support, and we're going to keep it going. Go Canes. Thank you, Rodney. It was a pleasure having you today, and good luck this season. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That will wrap up our preseason basketball special. Should be an exciting year for both the men and the women. Thanks to all of our student athletes, as well as head coach Jim Laranega and Katie Meyer, as well as Tamara Brown. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time, and go Canes.